So in today's video, I'm gonna show you exactly step-by-step step how you can set up AI warm-up for your email accounts in SmartLead. Now, if you don't get this right, you pretty much have a 0% chance of succeeding with your email accounts. They need to be warmed up for at least two weeks with the right settings I'm gonna show you in today's video, or you won't get any success from your email accounts. So whether this is your first time setting this up or you've done this multiple, multiple times, I'm gonna be giving you different insight and the exact settings you should be setting up for your warm-up on your email account. So let's get straight into the video. Email warm up is a very, very important part of the process. If you don't warm up your emails properly, they're not gonna land in the primary inbox and you're not really gonna see any results from cold email. So this is gonna be a bit more of a basic video, but it's gonna be a step-by-step -step training on how to actually properly set up the warm up for your accounts. It'll be valuable for everyone because there may be some bits in there that you didn't know, even if you're advanced, but especially if you're a beginner, this is gonna go literally from the very start of creating a smart lead account to adding your email accounts and then how to actually properly configure the warm up, right? So I'll go into, I've broke it down into 11 steps very, very simply. I've got my smart lead account here where I'm actually gonna be adding an email account to show you exactly how we do it and then how to turn on the warm up feature, what uh, settings to press, so it's gonna warm up properly, okay? And I'll tell you how long you need to warm it up as well. So the first step, of course, is to actually go to Smart Lead. What you wanna do from there is log in or create an account. So if you haven't created an account already, it's really, really simple to sign up for. You've just got a sign up button in the top right. You can press that. You can even use a link in the description to create your account. Um, but once you've created that, then you obviously need to log in. From there, you need to navigate to the dashboard. So it looks something like this. You'll have multiple bits on the left-hand side. You'll have email campaign, master inbox you can see. It's got email accounts also. It's got all leads, integrations, client access, global analytics, and smart delivery. So in your account, depending on which plan you've got, you may not have all of these, but the one that we're gonna be most interested today is the email accounts section. Okay, so as you open up your smart lead dashboard, you just need to go to the email account section on the left hand side and it will show you the email accounts that you have in your account. Of course, if you already have accounts set up, then great, you'll see some. If this is your first time setting this up, then you won't see anything in here and that's completely normal because we will need to add these accounts in. So that's the third step. Fourth step is to click on email accounts, which I just mentioned as well. So navigate to that. And then we wanna actually start adding the email account. So all of this has given us sort of the basic foundations so far to actually add that first email account. So the way you wanna do this is you see there's a button in the top right hand corner that says add accounts. We wanna press on that and it will give us some options. Okay, it will either allow us to connect our email account that we have already, and obviously I recommend this if you already have email accounts, you've set up domains, you've set up inboxes, then great, we can connect those. Or you can create your own uh, primary inbox optimized infra that Smart Lead will do for you. I'm gonna show you both options, but the most common option is probably you already have the domains and you already have the accounts, um, and that's where you'd wanna select the first option. Now, of course, it gives you the option, again, to pick which platform you're using for this, whether they're Gmail accounts, Outlook accounts, or you have SMTP set up. So, the common ones, of course, will be Google and Outlook. If you're using those, then it's very simple. All you need to do is press on this and log into your actual email account. I'll show you how you do this. So, say, for example, I wanna log into my Gmail account. I'll just press Gmail. Now, you need to make sure that you have this OAuth in your actual admin workspace. So if you follow these step-by-step -step guides, and it's got a quick guide here as well, you can, um, you can see exactly what you need to do. But effectively, what you need to do is go to your admin panel if you haven't set this up already. So if you go to your admin panel, then you'll probably see nothing configured in here, unless, of course, you've done this before. Now, what you'd need to do if it's completely empty is actually configure a new app and just simply copy and paste this client ID to add Smart Lead. This means that you're basically giving Smart Lead permission and authority to send emails on your behalf because it's using the, the API calls there. So that's what you need to do. Um, once you've done that, then you can connect your account. If you try and skip this step and connect your account, it will not work, so it's very important you do this. Once you've done that, you press account, select your account that you wanna connect, and then obviously you'd log in as normal and Gmail. So I'm gonna press continue, allow, and it's gonna basically allow to send emails from my behalf, of course, and then the account will be added. So that's uh, obviously step number five. Step number six would be to authenticate that, right? So as you go through this process, I think it's just allowed me to add mine straight away. Sometimes if you're using Gmail, using Outlook, especially on new accounts, it will ask you to authenticate it, ask you to verify it, maybe with a number. If you don't have a number and your number isn't working, we recommend using SMS pool 
.NET, right? So what this does, if you're struggling to get into an account because you don't have a correct number, this will give you, rent you a number for a few minutes for something like 40 cents, 20 cents, and then you can log into any one of your accounts. And it means that your mobile isn't attached to each one of these accounts, which can be handy. That's one way I would do it. And then obviously once you've got that, now it's time to enable warm up, right? So I'm going through this very quickly, so hopefully you're uh, staying, staying along with me. But you can see here that we have a few options. We've got overview in our account, we've got general, we've got warm up, we've got management, and we've got campaigns. I'm just gonna make this larger for everyone watching, right? So the one we're interested in here right now is warm up. Okay, so you need to press on this one here you can see that these are the default options that it gives us. Now, what I would do personally, this is what we're doing at the moment, is I'll change it to these settings, right? So I'm currently sending around 10 email warm-up emails per day. <clears throat> so I've sent 10. I have a ramp up of five. I have the variability between one and 10. Actually, I usually do this between three and 10. And then my reply rate is 30%, okay? So that's what our settings look like at the moment because we start to send a very low volume of emails as well, kind of early, but you want this to be on for at least two weeks before you send anything from those email accounts. So take a look at this screenshot if you need to see. This is what we do. 10 emails per day on warm-up, daily ramp up of five, three to 10 uh, variability, and reply rate of 30%. Then all you need to do is press the bottom right here. It says enable warm-up and that will get that warm up. So your mailbox will start receiving warm up emails. To keep your inbox clean, you can use our intelligent filter. So what happens with these warm up emails is they're gonna be AI generated and they're gonna be complete nonsense, complete gobbledygook. It's not gonna make sense. However, they're gonna have a specific keyword attached, okay? And that will be dependent on each account. You can see for mine, I've got Rhyme Dive. This is the custom filter. So if I wanted to exclude all these warm-up emails from my email account, I would go on my email account, whether that's Gmail, Outlook, or your own server, and I would just get all of the emails, including Rhyme Dive, like this, sent automatically to my archive, or to my junk folder, or not necessarily to junk folder, or to the deleted folder, so I don't have to see them, right? Or just to another folder that you can rename warm-up emails, if you wanted to do that. But that's a good way to keep your inbox clean because you don't want to be having tons of warm-up emails in your account. You, it will just uh, be a bit of a headache, so you don't want that. Apart from that, we just press that. We can press update, and that warm-up is pretty much good to go. So the reason why we have 30% reply rate, you don't want this too low. It recommends 20. 20 is also fine. But we see the more engagement in the early days you get back of your email account, i.e. the higher reply rate, the, the better the warm-up usually is. 10 emails per day is a safe sending volume, and then obviously we've added that variability in there as well. So that's step seven. Step eight, obviously we've just done that as well, is customized warm-up settings. So if you have any questions about why we select the things we do, put them in the comments, but that's how we set our emails to warm up, then we leave them for two weeks in this warm-up phase. Now what you can see as they warm up, should be in this overview section, you'll basically get track of how many emails you're sending, how many are landing in the inbox, uh, how many are landing in spam, and you'll see the overall health of the accounts. Now this will give you a two week basically timeline. So it's the ena enabled, <clears throat> recording this on the 17th of December. It'll be ready for outbound when it's at 100% and that'll be in two weeks time. So until then, we need to leave it, we need to continue allowing it to warm up, it's making sure that everything's landing in the inbox. If it's not, then there's some issues we need to look at like DNS settings and things like that to make sure the email account is set up correctly in the first place. But that's what we need to do. So those are email accounts, how we do that. Obviously, I've just mentioned monitor those warm-up analytics across the first two weeks. So don't use these for sending in the first two weeks, okay? Just get them warming up because when they're actually warmed up, then we can put them to effective use and we can actually start to book sales calls and get the outcome that we want. But before that's too early, you won't get enough replies for Outlook, Microsoft, or the other servers to think this a, a, a well-used email account, okay? Because at the end of the day, cold email replies are gonna be low, and you're probably gonna get marked to spam more than you would actually like in the first place. Obviously, there's things you can do to get around that, which I'm gonna discuss in a second, but it's just important to keep a pulse on these accounts as they warm up. So, one of the other things you need to do, obviously, is check the authentication. This will lead into the next step, which is the success to make sure your account is all ready to go. So technically, just following all of those steps, yeah, your email accounts would be warming up, and in two weeks' time, they're good to go. However, 
Much like point 10, there's some things we need to have a look at, which could be DNS. Because the reality is, just warming up your email accounts, like this, for two weeks, will not save you from certain things. This will not automatically make your email start working. Because if you don't have the correct DNS settings in there, right, you've got bad DNS, and it's not configured correctly, by the way, which you can check on a tool called mxtoolbox.com. If that's not set up correctly, then you just simply will not see success from your campaigns because they're gonna go by default to spam. So it's not gonna be very easy to manage them. So you need to make sure your DNS is correct. Use this tool to double check that. Another thing that warm up will not save you from is bad copy. Of course, if you're not writing good copy in your emails, no one's gonna reply anyway. It doesn't matter if you're hitting the primary inbox. If your email is not optimized and not compelling enough to get them to reply, you will not get a reply. So I recommend you go and watch the other video that I have on this Smartly channel about how to actually write effective cold emails to get replies, especially going into 2025. So give that a watch. And then of course, other poor deliverability practices. So this could be sending volume. For example, you've warmed your email accounts up for two weeks. You do not wanna go and start sending 50 to 100 emails a day per account work from those accounts because it will just go to spam again. So good deliverability practices looks like starting low volume in the region of 10 to 20 emails per day and slowly ramping up to maybe a tops of 25. Okay, I recommend 20 personally, but you could probably get away with 25. Of course, there's other things as well, like the actual copy itself, not necessarily how compelling the copy is, but keywords you're using. We have a tool called Mail Meteor Spam Checker. So we use a tool called mailmeteor.com and it's mailmeteor.com forward slash spam checker to check if your copy has bad keywords and it will get flagged by the spam filters. Okay, so this is another deliverability practice that you need to put in to make sure your emails will deliver. Another one is spin tax. If you don't know what spin tax is, then I recommend watching other videos on this channel, but it's basically creating variations of your copy so it doesn't get picked up by the filters. And just generally to keep yourself well versed in deliverability practices because just warming up your accounts and doing the step by step that I've shown you in today's video will not save your email accounts and make them start working extremely well. You need to do the other things in conjunction, which is really what all the videos in this uh, channel are for. So recommend watching all of those. But just in terms of today's video, how to actually set up warm up from scratch. This is the 11 step process I'd follow and that's exactly how you can do it as well if you replicate this video. If you wanna go back and watch it again, certain parts of it, as you go and do this yourself, I'd recommend that just so you don't miss anything out. But hopefully this video has been useful and I'll see you on the next one. So take care, bye-bye.